That then takes us into the 20th century with 1999. American Beauty, The Cider House Rules, The Green Mile, The Insider, and The Sixth Sense. American Beauty is such a problematic movie looked at from a modern viewpoint. It's creepy as... Cider House Rules is very much a kind of Sundance movie. The Green Mile, the last great magical Negro movie. Really... And kind of immersive when you're watching it, but afterwards you go, uh, uh, The Insider. Again, it's a, an important drama, but I don't think it's best picture worthy. And you got The Sixth Sense, which I picked the ending of before the twist came when I saw it. But were I to pick one, I think The Sixth Sense is a very well made movie. It tells a small story well. It's creepy as hell when it needs to be. And between Harley Joel Osman and Bruce Willis, really strong cast as well. So I'm going to go with The Sixth Sense. A little bit controversial. That's where I'm going to sit. 1998 was the real, real problematic one for a lot of people. Shakespeare loved one because Harvey Weinstein basically took a pair of plies to the nuts of the Academy to get it to win. I saw it and I enjoyed it, but I don't think it's the best movie ever. Elizabeth was nominated as well with Kate Blanchett. Life is Beautiful, Roberto Benigni's movie. Saving Private Ryan and the remake of The Thin Red Line. Um, you got to go with Saving Private Ryan, particularly for that first scene. I saw it at a preview with a whole bunch of Australian World War II veterans, and we talked to a few of them after the preview, and they were blown away with how accurate that one. It shattered them because of that accuracy. Those guys went, yeah, that's what it was like. It was chaotic. It was scary. You didn't know from one second to the other where you're going to die. They were really impressed with that film, and I've got to go with their opinion on that. Saving Private Ryan's the one. 1997, Titanic one, because everybody watched it 15 times. I'm as good as it gets, which I find creepy. I think the Jack Nicholson character in there is creepy. The film Monty, which is such fun, and I like a good working class comedy. Good Will Hunting. But again, that's, that's insulting. It's a movie that brought Affleck and um, Damon to prominence. It's uh, an honest story. A story of marginalised people with a lot to give. And LA Confidential. Directed by Curtis Hanson. Terrific ensemble cast, including Kevin Spacey, of course, problematic, but you know. I'm going with LA Confidential. I think that's just such a great adaptation of James Elroy's novel. The ensemble works really well for me, and that period feel really works. And the narrative line of corruption being innate to Hollywood studios is something that all of us should remember. 1996, the English Patient won. Fargo was nominated. Jerry Maguire, which I've got no time for. Secrets and Lies, now a Michael Easy movie, which is a really interesting film. And Shine, the story of David Helfgott, directed by Scott Hicks, and starring Jeffrey Rush and Noah Taylor. Were I to pick one, I'm going to have to go with Fargo, even though Shine is an Australian movie about an Australian man. Fargo is the one. Fargo is the one that's had the legs over the last couple of decades. It's watchable, it, it fears between comedy and horror, has such a great central character played by Francis McDormand. I just love the movie. 1995, Braveheart one, Apollo 13, Babe, The Postman, Il Postino, and the sequel to Dumb and Dumber, Sense and Sensibility, Emma Thompson and uh, Kate Winslet. Braveheart I don't really like. I think it's Vanity Project in some ways by Mel Gibson. Apollo 13, that thing does a really good job. Babe, didn't like that much. Talking Pigs. Porky's my guy. Um, The Postman, I saw a long time ago, but I didn't particularly like. And Sense of Sensibility, I really like. I think it's a lot of fun. And it's the best adaptation of Jane Austen's novel. Directed by Ang Lee. Emma Thompson wrote the screenplay. I'm going with Sense of Sensibility. I, I like that one a lot. And I think it... Even though I'm not the target audience for that kind of movie, I enjoyed it when I saw it. 1994, 30 years ago, Forrest Gump won. We also had Four Weddings and a Funeral, Pulp Fiction, Quiz Show, and The Shawshank Redemption. Now, Forrest Gump always struck me as a crazily weird film. And the takeaway I got from that movie is, if you're an utter moron, you can get along really well in America. There were better movies that year, even though it had a kind of viralness about it. If you're going to pick a movie, you're going to go with either Pulp Fiction, which I loved, or The Shawshank Redemption, which I, I respect a lot. If I was going to do a tie, I'd do a tie between those two. But ultimately, I like Pulp Fiction because it's the movie that influenced so many films after it. There were so many Pulp Fiction wannabes in the 30 years since Pulp Fiction came out. 
that of those movies, looking at it with 2020 hindsight, it's the movie that really influenced film the most. And of course, at the time, people didn't know that. Nobody was going to do 30 years of Forrest Gump wannabe movies, but they do it with Pulp Fiction. Taking that chopped up narrative and linking it all together and combining comedy with horror with interesting characters and, and crazy goings on. Pulp Fiction is going to be the one. 1993 Schindler's List, the putative remake of the TV series. In the name of the father, Jim Sheridan's movie about the Guilford Four with Daniel Day-Lewis. The Piano, Jane Campion's The Piano with Holly Hunter and Harvey Keitel and Sam Neill. And The Remains of the Day. You can't really take it away from Schindler's List. That one hit like a bomb. But I will tell you an interesting story. I went to the cinema in a place called Forest Hill in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne. At the time Schindler's List was out. And there was a little bar and bistro next to the cinema which was doing cocktails based on the movie showing the cinema. And this place had the balls to make a Schindler's List cocktail for people to drink before they went and saw this harrowing, monstrously confronting movie. These people thought it was a good idea to make a cocktail. Yeah, I'm, I was just kind of mind blown by that. But moving on to 1992, Unforgiven Clint Eastwood, last decent Western Clint Eastwood did. The Crying Game, which had more than a few men shocked at the end of it. A few good men, legal drama, Tom Cruise, Jack Nicholson, Demi Moore, Howard's End, another Merchant Ivory film, Scent of a Woman, Marty Breast's movie with Al Pacino overacting. Can't really take that away from Unforgiven. Solid Western and Clint Eastwood's stoic acting really played into his character in that one. Can't argue with it. 1991, Silence of the Lambs won. Beauty and the Beast was nominated. Bugsy was nominated. JFK was nominated. And The Prince of Tides, which was a good story, but because Barbara Streisand directed it, they skewed it towards her character rather than the more interesting Nick Nolte character in it. But I'm going with Silence of the Lambs. Again, it's a movie that's had a lot of influence since then. And Tony Hopkins was the second best person to play Hannibal Lecter. I think Brian Cox's original version of it, for me, is a much more interesting character. Even though Tony Hopkins' Hannibal Lecter is an interesting choice. Particularly for what's right at the end of the film. When he makes the phone call and walks away from the phone booth. Anthony Hopkins is walking like a predatory cat. I love that bit. And so I've got to give it to Silence of the Lambs. 1990, Dances with Wolves won, which is Avatar Without the Smurfs. Awakenings, which is a solid drama. Ghost, which I didn't like. Godfather Part 3, Prince of Four Coppola's ending of the trilogy. And yes, Sophie Coppola was miscast as the daughter, but what can you do? And Goodfellas. you got to give it to Goodfellas. Fantastic Scorsese movie. Beautiful acting, beautiful camera work. Again, another movie that has had a lot of influence since then. It has stayed in the public eye a lot. So I would definitely go with Goodfellas for 1990. 1989, Driving Miss Daisy won. Born on the 4th of July was nominated. Dead Poets Society was nominated. Field of Dreams was nominated. And My Left Foot. Um, Born on the 4th of July, good Oliver Stone movie, but I still don't like Tom Cruise. Dead Poets Society, Peter Weir directed it. Robin Williams was great at it. Inspirational teachers, inspiring students is always a good theme for a movie. Field of Dreams, sports ball movie with ghosts. My Left Foot, about Christy Brown. Fantastic film, fantastic acting. I'm going to have to give it to My Left Foot. I think Daniel Day-Lewis is fantastic in that. The other movies, some of them are good. Dead Power Society is great. Born on 4th of July is kind of great. But My Left Foot is, even though you do have a physically able actor playing a disabled character, a movie that does that honestly. Again, 1988, Rain Man, you've got a neurally non-diverse actor playing a neural diverse character. Rain Man is so 1980s. Um, you've got The Accidental Tourist, Lawrence Kasdan's movie, Dangerous Liaisons, which is a lot of fun, with Michelle Pfeiffer, John Malkovich, and Glenn Close. Mississippi Burning, Alan Parker's movie, with Gene Hackman and Willem Dafoe. Two great actors working together. You've got to love that kind of thing. And Working Girl, Mike Nichols, comedy with Sigourney Weaver, Harrison Ford, and Melanie Griffith. Um, I won't give it to Rain Man, but I think either Mississippi Burning or Dangerous Liaison. To take your pick on that one. 1987, The Last Emperor won. Bernardo Bertolucci's one. Fantastic looking film about the, the last emperor of China. Fantastic looking movie. Broadcast News, James L. Brooks's movie about broadcast news with Albert Brooks' 
William Hurt, don't remember much about it, Fatal Attraction, which is called an American erotic psychological thriller directed by Adrian Lynn about a guy who's married but hooks up with a uh, woman with mental illnesses who is then becomes the big bad in the movie. Not a nuanced and complex view of mental illness if you ask me. It's one of those ones that's tried to scare people into the status quo. Hasn't aged well. John Bowman's Hope and Glory. Kind of autobiographical about him growing up in London during the Second World War. And Moonstruck. Moonstruck, of course, with Cher and... Uh, Nicholas Cage, Danny Aiello, Libya Jakarkas. Uh, what would I go with in this one? Um, I think I've got to keep it with The Last Emperor. So I don't like any of the other ones enough to pick them. 1986 has got Platoon, which is a comedy riot. Children of a Lesser God with Marley Matlin and William Hurd talking about people who are born deaf and their right to have their own culture and language. Hannah and her sisters, Woody Allen movie, we'll forget that. The Mission, um, Roland Joffrey's movie with Robert De Niro, Jeremy Irons, um, Liam Neeson's in it as well. And A Room with a View is my old merchant, one of those great merchant ivory films. I like a good romance film. So I'm, even that platoon is rock solid. And Oliver Stone has lived experience of Vietnam. I kind of wanted to steer away from war films a bit. So I think A Room With A View I'm going to go with. It's a controversial choice. I think I prefer, I like A Room With A View better than I like Platoon. 1985. Out of Africa 1. Sydney Pods movie. Based on Karen Blixen's um, autobiographical story. With Meryl Streep and Robert Redford. Interestingly enough. Joe Bob Briggs gave Klaus Maria Brandauer an award for Out of Africa. For being the actor who gives Meryl Streep syphilis. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that there. Kiss of the Spider Woman, fantastic movie with Raul Julia in it and William Hurt and Sonia Braga about how imagination can be used to overcome adversity. Really good movie. Princey's Honor, black comedy directed by John Huston with Jack Nicholson and Kathleen Turner as mob assassins. And Witness, uh, Peter Weir directed Witness, Harrison Ford, Kelly McGill, Lucas Haas. A good movie, but... If I was going to pick one, I would go with Kiss of the Spider Woman, directed by Hector Babenko. Such a human movie, and I think it's the one that touches the emotions more than any of the other films of that particular year. 1984. 1984 wasn't nominated in 1984. Amadeus won. The Killing Fields, David Putnam's um, movie, directed by Roland Joffrey, was produced by David Putnam. The Passage to India, David Lean's movie. Places in the Hard, kind of Depression-era drama with uh, Sally Field, Lindsay Krauss, Ed Harris, and a soldier's story. How can you not give it to The Killing Fields? Just such a powerful film. And a movie with such honesty and such trauma. Killing Fields had to get it, even though I do like Amadeus. 1983, Terms of Endearment 1. The Big Chill was nominated, Gloris Kasdan's movie. The Dresser, which has just been released by Imprint in a Blu-ray here in Australia. The Right Stuff and Tender Mercies. Directed by an Australian Ted Bruce Beresford, starring Robert Javal. Terms of Endearment is okay, but it's not my kind of thing. I know a lot of other people like it. But where are to pick it? I'm going to go with The Right Stuff. I love the book by Tom Wolfe and I love the ensemble here. They picked perfect actors. For this movie directed by philip kaufman the right stuff is the right stuff for me 1982 gandhi won et was nominated missing was nominated costa gavras's movie with a uh, sissy spacek and jack clement tootsie which shows that a guy in drag can be a better woman than a lot of women and the verdict now which one will i go for gandhi is one of those big spectacles directed by dickie attenborough um et i wouldn't pick i think i'll go with the verdict because it's got a script by David Mabbitt, directed by Sidney Lamet, Paul Newman, Charlotte Radley, Jack Warden, James Mason, Milo O'Shea, Lindsay Krauss. Courtroom dramas can be hit or miss for me, but I think the verdict is so rock solid. I'm going to go with that one rather than Gandhi. 1981, Chariots of Fire 1, foot race movie. Atlantic City was nominated. Louis Miles movie with Burt Lancaster and Susan Sarandon, which I like. It's, it's one of those late Burt Lancaster roles that remind you how good an actor he was. On Golden Pond, a Nelly Jag movie with Catherine Hepburn and Henry Fonda, directed by Mark Rydell, but Jane Fonda as well. Raiders of the Lost Ark was nominated too, and Reds, Warren Beatty's Reds. A lot of people are going to say Raiders of the Lost Ark, and, and fair enough, I respect that decision. It was popcorn entertainment, but I have to go with Atlantic City. I like what it did, and I like the fact that it does have some incredibly solid acting, and it's got that combination of an old-school actor like Bert Lancaster, with Susan Sarandon, a younger, new generation actor. Atlantic City, I've got a lot of respect for, and I'll have to go with that. 
even though a lot of people can disagree with me and I'm fine for them to do that. 1980, Ordinary People won. The movie that everybody kind of went, oh look, Mary Tyler Moore Connect, um, directed by Robert Redford, about traumas among wealthy people in America. Not the theme that I'm leaping to watch at any time, really. Carl Miner's Daughter, uh, Loretta Lynn biopic with just this basic, good on this film. The Elephant Man, um, fantastic David Lynch film produced by none other than Mel Brooks, John Hurt, Anthony Hopkins, Raging Bull. That's all you've got to say, Raging Bull. And Tess, a yep. version of Tess and the Devils of Romy Pulaski director. You've got to go with Raging Bull, really, don't you? Again, it's a sports ball film, but Raging Bull is the kind of exception that I love. And I'd have to go with Raging Bull. Nobody remembers ordinary people. Everyone remembers Raging Bull. 1979, we're 10 years away from the end of this video. Kramer vs. Kramer 1 with Meryl Streep and Dustin Hoffman, directed by Robert Benton. All that jazz. Gotta love a bit of Fosse. Roy Scheider was never better. Apocalypse Now. Breaking Away. Pity Yates coming of age movie, which is a, a great fun movie. I love it. And Norma Ray about unionising a sweatshop in the South with Sally Field in it. Good solid movie. But you'd have to go with either Apocalypse Now or all that jazz. And I wouldn't go with Kramer versus Kramer. I think it's a little bit skewed towards misogyny. I can't pick between them. I'm going to go with a, a tie. All that jazz for the boldness of the self-reflection that Fosse puts into it. And Apocalypse Now for adapting Joseph Conrad to the Vietnam War. Crazy mad production. But the madness informs the movie in the best way. 1978, The Deer Hunter 1, Coming Home was nominated, a good post-Vietnam movie, Heaven Can Wait, a remake of a uh, 1940s kind of supernatural comedy, Midnight Express, read by Alan Parker, about a stupid American guy gets dumped as drug smuggling in Turkey, and an unmarried woman at a Paul Mazursky movie with Jill Clayburgh. You've got to give it to Deer Hunter. I think they chose correctly on this one. The Deer Hunter is something above all of the other films of that year 1977 and you know which one i'm not going to pick in this any hall one the goodbye girl julia star wars and the turning point um the goodbye girl is a comedy with uh marshall mason and richard dreyfus script by neil Simon, directed by herbert ross but julia is the kind of hidden gem here directed by fred zinnerman based on a bit of lynn hellman's um memoir pentimento about um, a friend of Lily Helman, the writers, who fought the Nazis and her story and her life with Vanessa Redgrave and Jane Fonda and Joseph Robots, Hal Holbrook, Maximilian Schell's in it as well. Julia's a good movie. A lot of people are going to say Star Wars, but I, I didn't like it. I think it's crazily overrated. And yes, you can at me in the comments if you want to. And The Turning Point with Anne Bancroft and Shirley MacLaine, a ballet movie and a good, honest pair of roles for Shirley MacLaine and Anne Bancroft. But I've got to give it to Julia, I think. At least once in this list, I've got to give it to a hidden gem, and I think Julia is very much a hidden gem. 1976, Rocky won, because everybody had forgotten Golden Boy. All the President's Men was nominated. Great script by William Goldman in that. Uh, directed by Alan J. Pakula. Bound for Glory, the biopic of Woody Guthrie with um, David Carradine. Forgotten the film, but Jesus good. Network. Paddy Chayefsky, written movie directed by Sidney Lumet. Fantastic role for Peter Finch. And Taxi Driver didn't win. Taxi Driver was beaten by Rocky. Taxi Driver, you've got to give it to Taxi Driver. Rocky is an, an old-fashioned and sentimental movie. Yes, it was a breakthrough movie for Stallone. It was more popular than sex at the time. But Taxi Driver, you've got to give it to Taxi Driver. 1975, One Flew Over the Cooker's S1. Barry Lyndon was nominated. Kubrick's Barry Lyndon. Dog Day Afternoon was nominated. Jaws was nominated. And Nashville was nominated. I think One Flew Over the Cooker's Nest is the one that deserved it. It's the only one of the five. It's a five, two, four, five. That I was in tears at the end of. Grand Ensemble cast. Perfect role for Jack Nicholson. Really solid film. Milosh Foreman did a fantastic job with it. Yeah. You've got to give it to One Flew Over the Cooker's Nest. 1974. Godfather Part 2 with 1. Chinatown was nominated. The Conversation, Francis Ford Coppola's Conversation was nominated. Lenny, the um, Fosse movie with Dustin Hoffman based on Lenny Bruce's life. And The Towering Inferno, which was entertaining as hell, but not a best picture. Godfather Part 2 or Chinatown or The Conversation. 
It's a hard one to pick there. Lord due respect to Godfather Part 2. I'm picking Chinatown. Chinatown is a gut punch solid private eye movie. So I'm going with Chinatown in 1974. 1973, The Sting One. The great movie with uh, Paul Newman and Robert Redford, Robert Shaw. Directed by George Roy Hill. Uh, they, really got, they got the gang back together from Butch Cassidy and the Sunman's Kid and did The Sting. American Graffiti was nominated. Whatever happened to George Lucas? Cries and Whispers, Ingmar Bergman's movie with Harry Anderson and Ingrid Thorlin. The Exorcist and A Touch of Class with George Segal and Glenda Jackson. Which is such fun, the chemistry between those two is great. I'm going out of the limb and saying The Exorcist. William Friedkin directed it, Ellen Burstyn, Max von Sydow, Jason Miller, Linda Blair. Could have a horror movie in the list somewhere. And I think The Exorcist is the one that had such a long tail to it and it's the one that messed up a lot of people at the time so i'm going with the exorcist 1972 the godfather was nominated cabaret was nominated deliverance was nominated the emigrants was nominated which is a swedish film with bax von Sydow and liv woolman and sounder preached by martin ritt about african-american sharecropping family in the, in the deep south you got to give it to the godfather Cabaret for me would be a close second. Deliverance for me would be a close second. But I think The Godfather, such an influential and powerful movie. 1971, The French Connection, A Clockwork Orange, Fiddler on the Roof, The Last Picture Show, Bogdanovich is The Last Picture Show, and Franklin J. Shafter's Nicholas and Alexandra about the Russian royalty before the revolution french connection last picture show yeah medium second but i think that they picked right with the french connection great movie terrific roles you're engrossed in it from the start to finish gene hackman's breakthrough role roy scheider's breakthrough role it tells the complex story of, of that drug bust in a fantastic beautiful dynamic way 1970 second last one Patton one story of george s Patton with um george c scott and carl malden Directed by Franklin Shafter. The other nominees were Airport, a great big ensemble movie about a plane crash, basically. Five Easy Pieces, Bob Rafelson's movie with Jack Nicholson, Karen Black, Susan Ann Spudge. Love Story, which is not a movie that's aged well. And MASH, the first American movie to be nominated for Oscar, where somebody says fuck. I'm going with MASH. Five Easy Pieces I like. Airport and Love Story are minor films. Patton I don't like. I'm going with MASH. It spawned the TV series, of course, but it stands alone as a movie about the absurdity of war. And it blends hilarious comedy with tragedy in a great way. And the ensemble works fantastically well as well. There are some problematic aspects as far as race and misogyny is concerned, but I think that it works really well. Then the last one we've got to do, 1969, Midnight Cowboy 1, Out of a Thousand Days with Javier Bourgeois and uh, Richard Burton, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, George Roy Hill's Western with uh, Newman and Redford, and Hello Dolly was in there as well, directed by Gene Kelly, with Barbara Streisand, and Zed otherwise known as Z. Costa Gavras' movie, which is about the events around a political assassination in somewhere which isn't explicitly named as Greece. Rock solid movie, but very political movie, which is not a negative thing at all. But I think you've got to keep it with Midnight Cowboy. Uh, it gave us two stars, John Boyd, who has since turned into a f total nut job, and Dustin Hoffman. A great movie that looks at alternate sexuality in a new way for the time. It was quite confronting because of that. But it is one of the great bromance movies. And it does have a stupid protagonist and a slightly more worldwide um, sidekick. And it does tug at your heartstrings. So I'm going with Midnight Cowboy. So there we go. I've covered all of the Oscars and all of the times they got it wrong. I've acknowledged in this second part some of the times that the Oscars got it right. Let me know what you think. I want to see which alternatives people would pick for a number of those years. So let me know in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you're stuck with it, thank you. You can show your gratitude by liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, leaving a comment, even just an emoji. You can also support the channel by donating at patreon.com slash terrytalksmovies or becoming a YouTube channel member. Next up, we've got Science Fiction Saturday, which is going to be a blast, and we're all going to have fun with it. So until then, watch some good movies, watch some bad movies. Watch some movies that should have won the Oscar. I'll catch you next time.